for subscribing to iFollow. The match will start shortly. Thanks for subscribing to iFollow. The match will start shortly. Hey, good evening and a very warm welcome from the Crown Oil Arena for the final Group C game in the Checker Trade Trophy between Rochdale and Rovers qualification. At stake for both sides this evening, Rochdale currently heading the group with four points from their two games. Rovers have three from their two. Tonight's game may prove decisive in terms of qualification or not. If it's a draw, it will depend on how tomorrow night's match between Bury and Stoke City under 21s pans out. So, to some extent... It is uh, pretty straightforward for Rovers this evening. Win and we are through to the next stage. If we don't win, if we are beaten, then we are out. Like I say, a draw and we will have to wait for the outcome of tomorrow night's game. Well, the news of the team for Rovers is that there are changes as expected from the side that were victorious in the FA Cup at the weekend. But nonetheless, still a strong Rovers side. For this uh, group game tonight, we will have in goal number 37, Andrew Fisher. It's two, Ryan Nyambi. Four, Rakeem Harper. Five is Sam Hart. Six is Richie Smallwood. Nine, Dominic Samuel. Fifteen, Elliot Ward. Twenty-two, Ben Gladwin. Thirty-one, the captain this evening is Elliot Bennett. Thirty-four, Scott Walton. And thirty-eight, the man who just keeps scoring goals and will make his first senior start this evening, it is Joe Nuttall on the bench. Four overs, number one, David Rea, 11, Peter Wettingham, 16, Paul Callis, 20 is Marcus Antonsen, 35, Lewis Travis, 39, Matty Platt, and 42 is Joe Ranking Costello. Jason Lutweiler was scheduled to start four overs this evening after making his debut for the club at the weekend in that victory over Barnet. But unfortunately for him, they picked up a thigh injury, hence why Andrew Fisher starts and uh, continue his run in the Checker Trade Trophy this season. Dave, David Ray. Here was the one set for a night off. He's been drafted in among the substitutes. You will notice there are some uh, big names, the likes of Danny Graham and Bradley Tack missing four overs this evening. They are just rested. No injury concerns with them. Of course, Rovers earlier this season were victorious here at the Crown Oil Arena by three goals to nil. A repeat result tonight. We'll see us through to the next stage. Marcus Antonsen was on target that night, as was Richie Smallwood. Smallwood back in the starting eleven after serving a one-match suspension and sitting out that cup tie against... Barnett, he's back, Elliot Bennett, well, likewise, he's recently missed the game through suspension, and although tonight's game doesn't count, he's on the threshold still. Here we go, make it interesting. Car, so it's something he'll have to we'll put a fiver on, going forward. I must Dominic be mad. Samuel, another back from a pan, four rovers tonight, three games he missed. Bring it on. He's sending off against Portsmouth, and interesting to see how he will go on alongside Joe Nuttall, Nuttall who's... Rapidly making a, a big name for himself at Rome has, of course, scored in the Checker Trade Trophy earlier this season against Stoke City and has followed that up of late with goals last midweek against Fleetwood. And then at the weekend, again, having come off the bench in that FA Cup win over Barnett. And Rovers' reward, of course, for beating Barnett is another whole tie in the competition facing Crew in the next stage and that to be played over the weekend somewhere between the 1st and the 4th of December a very diff different atmosphere inside the stadium tonight as you would expect there were over 3,000 travelling supporters for that league game back in <laughs> September I think we're probably nearer the 300 mark if <laughs> no. that, that might be generous looking at the travelling fans no tonight but the uh, Rochdale areas aren't that much more populated 
They've uh, not offered either of the stands behind the goals this evening. They've got the main stand, which we are in at the moment, houses the home supporters. And if I stand up, I can look down. And there's a decent number. I think they were expecting up to about a 1,000 fans here tonight, but not many more at all. Well, the two sides have made their way out onto the pitch ahead of this final group game in the Checker Trade Trophy. Group C over the next couple of days will come to its conclusion. Can Rovers be among the qualifiers for the next stage of the competition? It isn't the priority like the FA Cup. There are bigger fresh for Rovers to fry this season. But with the prospect of a day out at Wembley, it's not. Thanks for subscribing to iFollow. The match will start shortly. Thanks for subscribing to iFollow. The match will start shortly. <laughs> I bleed blue and white. Thanks for subscribing to iFollow. The match will start shortly. Well, they just had the radio up and now they've switched it off just as it's beginning. Uh, Thanks for subscribing to iFollow. The match will start shortly. Thanks for wasting your money on iFollow. It's a big bag of steaming poo. Okay, it started and the radio doesn't work. Brilliant. Thanks for subscribing to iFollow. The match will start shortly. And then it's silence there ahead of Remembrance Day this weekend. That's so the game about to get underway. Robbers in this first half will kick from left to right. We're in the changed kit. Black and red, hoping to claim the victory that would see us through to the next stage of the competition. Our referee this evening is Sebastian Stockbridge, and we are underway. Immediately out towards Not All It Goes. He's beaten in the end by Joseph Rafferty down the line towards Samuel, who will give chase. Shepherded behind by Harrison McGahey, and that will be the first goal kick of the night going in Rochdale's favour. Mahos, 17th in League One, with the best of starts to the campaign for Keith Hill and his side. Rose, of course, as we stand at the moment of in the top six, but that may change given that Rovers don't have the game this weekend. Him against Walsall having been called off. The side who do play have the opportunity to leapfrog Rovers in the table. i run down the two teams in full shortly. Yeah, right it's thrown down the line on the far side. 
Gladwin. Oh, no, Give chase uh, towards Lily Seagulls. High downfield. He looks. Wharton stoops to win the header, but he's been adjudged to have fouled. A Rochdale man. Free kick taken quickly. But behind and Claire on the far side. And out of play, it will go for a Rovers throw. Back to Ward. It looks long downfield. There are plenty of experience in the Rovers side tonight. Samuel beaten in the air by Canavan. Harper trying to get there. Gets a touch, sends it back to Wharton. Opportunity for him to impress Tony Mowbray for the first time, of course, last season. He was on loan at Cambridge when Tony Mowbray arrived and this season beset by injury problems. Nyambi down the right-hand side, gets his cross into the middle where it's cleared away by Canavan. Back out of play near side. And it's Rovers who will get the throw. Nyambi, the man to take. Bennett looking for half a yard, not all trying to do likewise inside the area. Jockeying for position, the pair of them. Nyambi still got the ball in towards Nuttall, who holds off the first man, right-hand corner of the penalty area, back to Smallwood, he goes into the feet of Gladwin, Gladwin takes it on then, loses out, strong challenge coming in from the Rochdale man, both men staying on their feet there, Samuel though wins it back and slides it into the feet of Nuttall, back to Samuel, looking for a teammate, Harper on first time towards Bennett, tackle comes in from Williams, and out of play, it goes, another Rovers throw, you know you made it when, you, when you're playing in the checker trade. Nyambi, again on the touchline. <coughs> but he was brought down. The referee agrees with him. And you'll have shed the offender there. It's been a combative start to this game. It always feels a little bit weird with the atmosphere for these matches when there aren't too many supporters inside the stadium. Wharton coming forward, fires that one at the feet of Samuel, couldn't take it in his stride. And Claire moves forward, looking <coughs> for options. The Rathbone goes back, and is greeted by a few moans and groans from the home supporters. Name familiar, yes, he is related to Rathbone, the former Rover, son of central midfielder. Shot to Camps, who's alongside him. Three playing central, really, for Rochdale. In the middle of the park. It's cross field. It goes. Headed in field. By Enclair. Nice little turn by Slew. Former role for Jordan Slew. Strong challenge by Smallwood, edge of the area. Oh, he now pops it away towards Gladwin. Slew trying to get back on turns with him. Gladwin chips the ball forward. Looking for Nuttall. Nuttall can't get there. And then Camp oh, sends up. Not megging Gladwin. Towards Rafferty. The ward steps in. Has it back. The referee allows the advantage. A small one plays it onto Bennett. Bennett trying to prod that one on towards Samuel on the Rovers' right. He then looks round at the referee and says, could I not have had the free kick? Sebastian Stockbridge is the official this evening. He waved those appeals away. Now with Bunny on the Rochdale right. Beaten off the ball by a combination of Gladwin and Hart. Downfield he goes. Good strength by Nuttall. Holding off McGehee. Turns infield to Bennett. Outside of the right foot. Sends Nyambi scampering towards the touchline. Forward to Samuel. Nice little turn infield from Samuel. Back towards Nyambi. Right hand side of the penalty area. Pull back towards Bennett. It's in a really good challenge coming in from Enclair. To deny the captain this evening, Elliot Bennett, what would have been the first real Hello. opportunity of the game. A really good break forward from Rovers. A result is the corner which Bennett will take right footed and it goes, headed away by Callum Camps. Harper will try and get there and he got something on the ball but again... Camps is there to pick it up and he just runs that one out of play. So Rovers have the throw near side. Nyambi again, the man with the ball 
in his hands. Nice turn by the young fullback. Slides it down the rover's right. Not all wiped out by the defender. And that will be a free kick. <clears throat> and a few yards in from touch on the near touchline. Good opportunity for Rovers to send some bodies forward. Again, I just wonder if that had been a league game, whether there might have been a little bit more punishment for the Rochdale player. Referee just having a quiet word. And it will be Bennett once more, who stands over the free kick. You can hear the tension in the stands. Ward and Wharton have gone forward. So Bennett right hand side, probably 16 yards from the goal line. Plenty of black and red shirts to aim for in the middle. Holds one arm up aloft. Now moves forward. Right footed. High delivery towards Nuttall. Just taking off his head. Small would try and keep it alive at the back edge of the penalty area. Can't do so. It's cleared downfield where Slew is battling with Hart. Two men with a portfolio connection there. Kept in play by Bunny. All the way back to Lillis. It goes. Long downfield. Walton up early on Slew. Wins his header. Smallwood has got pressure on him from Rathbone. Rathbone prods the ball and I'll play far side. Rovers throw. Two teams. Seven and a half minutes played. Still goalless here in this Checker Trade Trophy Group C game. Rovers lining up with Fisher in goal. It's a back four of Nyambi, Ward, Wharton and Hart. Bennett, Smallwood, Harper and Gladwin in midfield. Samuel and Nuttall up top. So very much 4-4-2 for Rovers tonight. It's a 4-3-3 for Rochdale. Maybe we come back to that because they're just breaking forward with Bunny on the right-hand side. Moves infield onto his left foot. Sends a teasing cross in. Bennett stoops to head away. Samuel midway inside his own half. Takes it beyond Canavan and now he'll burst forward. Gladwin is in acres of space over on the far side. He tries to hook the ball to him and gets it wrong. Nuttall was looking to sort of pick off what was ultimately a loose pass. Can't do so. And then good pressure by Nuttall again. Hart trying to win it back. Rathbone turns it round the corner looking for Slew. Wharton wins his header. Smallwood brings it down. Sends it back infield to Ward who punts it forward straight down the throat of Canavan. Camps slides it towards Bunny on the Rochdale right. Looking to run at Hart. Hart wants to show him on the outside. Bunny wants to get back onto his left foot. Hart wins that duel. And left footed clears it up towards halfway. And Nuttall who... Didn't get much of a touch on the ball. Samuel wasn't alive to it, though. McGay hit down the line to Rafferty as Rochdale have it back. Ten yards inside the Rovers' half. Far touch line. Bunny back down the right-hand side. Bit of space for Rafferty now. Chance for him to cross. Digs it out. High towards the back post. And Fisher. Well, it looks as though he was going to spill that one initially. Then recovered well to grab the ball at the second time of asking. And Rochdale's first really threatening attack of the game doesn't end up coming to anything as Hart clears down the line not all glances that one in field can't find Gladwin big night you feel for Ben Gladwin who needs a performance <clears throat> just not sparkled in Rovers colours so far miscue from and Claire out of play it goes so the host is yeah. running quickly down their side Lillis in goal back four of Rafferty McGahey Canafin and in Claire Mid midfield three Rathbone Camps and Williams and then it's Bunny on the right Hatchet on the left and slew through the middle up top. Small looks towards the Rovers' right in Nyambi, controls it on his chest, back to Bennett, into the feet of Samuel, short sleeves and gloves for Dominic Samuel, and holds off a couple of challenges and then turns nicely, played it through towards Bennett, who hadn't made a forward move, and in the end it runs through to Josh Lillis in that Rochdale goal. Rochdale so far in the tournament have Hammond Berry in the first group game, then lost on penalties to Stoke City on the 21s in their second match, hence why they've got four points from their two games so far. Rovers beat Stoke, then lost to Berry. Explaining to some extent why the group at the moment is so tight. And at this stage, any of the sides can qualify. Flip forward towards Bunny, who's stolen in behind Hart into the area. Try to lay it square, and Wharton gets back to turn that one behind. And that will be a Rochdale corner. Well, it's been an assured start from Scott Wharton at the back. The man who, on the 12th, and a bit 
months ago now. Made his senior debut for Rovers. It's Burton. And then went on to score, funnily enough, against Crewe in the League Cup, who Rovers will face in the FA Cup in a few weeks' time. We'll be delighted to be back in action this evening. Corner sent in deep towards Unclair, who heads wide, off target. Unmarked, really, about 12 yards out. But he failed to test Fisher. One of those where he was able to try and generate a lot of the power himself and wasn't able to do so. So goal kick, and still goalless here at the Crown Oil Arena after just shy of 12 minutes. Both sides have had one promising burst forward. One good piece of defending to end that foray downfield from the attackers. Now a short header back towards Lillis, which not all was keen to try and get on the end of. Unable to do so. Claire. Near side, just inside Rovers' territory, backed up by Camps. And Rochdale's skipper this evening. Short ball towards Adshed. Okay, he again finds Camps. And everything will go through Callum Camps, who is quite highly rated. Linked with Rovers about 12 months or so ago. Short, stocky build, the Rochdale captain. Hosts in their blue shirts, white shorts, blue socks this evening. Canavan, short to Camps. Of course, the draw may well favour Rochdale. That's one of those where a draw might work for both sides, depending on the outcome of the uh, penalty shootout at the end of it, which is something we've not yet seen involving Rovers. Smallwood has brought down and Clare. So the free kick midway inside. The Rovers half inside left channel. Be whipped in. Canavan has gone forward. McGahey at the moment has stayed back. Bonnie standing all alone. Right hand corner of the penalty area. No one quite with him yet. Or very congested in the central area. Sort of seven Rovers players pretty much in a line. Hart being told to go a little bit wider to try and mark him. Free kick will be whipped in by Rathbone, right footed, just high, looping ball towards Canavan, who heads down into the ground. Fisher was able to come and collect. I think there was a foul on Scott Walter and the referee indicating there that he was happy to play the advantage with the ball going to Fisher. And now Smallwood finds Nyambi. Back to the experienced Elliot Ward. Who of late has found himself out of the side with Downing and Mulgrew. A seemingly settled central defensive partnership. Samuel carrying the ball at the moment. Forced to check. Back to Harper. He goes. Not seen much of Rakeem Harper so far in this game. I could argue we've not seen a massive amount of him in Rovers' colours of yet. Whenever he's had the opportunity, he's not really sparkled. A ward it is who just lofts a high ball forward. Picked up by Rathbone, slides it down the right-hand side towards Bunny. Bunny checks, gets it onto his left foot, tees it up for Rafferty. Rafferty couldn't take it cleanly in his stride. Bunny again whips the cross in, and Fisher backtracking towards his goal. And is able to collect. Not the best of deliveries from Bunny. And I think if he was more naturally right-footed, he'd maybe have whipped that one in at the first time of asking that. Fisher outside the area, right-footed, launched it long downfield. Not all was the intended target, too high for him. Rafferty guides it back to Lillis. Rochdale are just starting to get the upper hand in this game. By this point in the league meeting between the two sides, Rovers had hit the front with Richie Smallwood on target. It's Canavan down the line and Clare is onside. Can he keep that one in play? He's going to find himself tight near the corner flag. Plays it against Bennett. Bennett will prevent the corner and play it neatly against Kosey and Clare. And behind that one goes and that will be a goal kick. Still no real golden goal scoring opportunity for either side. I have to say that many would have wondered you know, how do these two sides approach this game? How seriously they're taking it. Well, both have gone pretty strong this evening. Both have rested some key players, but it's not wholesale changes with the kids playing. 
We're getting to this stage, the third and final group game. Still having the chance to qualify. I think both managers, Tony Mowbray and Keith Hill, thinking, you know what, having got to this point, let's see if we can go through. It's not all. Finding Hart, firing that one at his feet, forcing Hart to actually stumble over. It was the ball who tripped him up there. Lillis sends it long downfield. Slew will battle with Wharton. Wharton did well to win his header. Ward will come under pressure and he turns into trouble. And has he given it away? The answer is no. Half an hour can spring rovers downfield. Bennett is the out ball to his right. Bennett can now drive forward. He's got two to aim for in the middle as he plays it low towards Samuel. First time shot inside the D edge of the penalty area. Spins off McGahey and goes behind and that will be a rovers corner. Samuel has looked bright tonight. Yes, he's got to make up a bit of ground, maybe on John Nuttall, certainly on Danny Graham, who in the last couple of weeks has come in and done well for overs. Bennett with the corner and it goes. Again, not perhaps deep enough, but headed away comfortably. Harper gives it back to Nyambi. Nyambi looking for options. Back towards Bennett, near touchline. Faced by two, slides it in field, asks a lot there. Of Sam Hart. Hart had to stretch for that one and Bennett lucky, lucky that it comes straight back to him. He fires it forward. Canavan there unchallenged. Can find Camps. Camps back to Lillis whose first touch was a little bit heavy and invited Samuel to put him under pressure. But he got his kick off. And Wharton now will go all the way back. Other end of the park to Andrew Fisher. Just the one goal conceded in the two games for Andrew Fisher that he's played in the checker trade and that gave a goal I was going to say against Berry, one that a different day, different referee may have been disallowed given the challenge on him generally looked a safe pair of hands from what we've seen well, Gladwin brings it down, beautiful control and then a lovely ball towards Samuel, edge of the area goes infield and loses track of the ball Gladwin did well there, Samuel couldn't quite take it in his stride Half a chance goes begging four overs. Again, Wharton and Slew having a right old battle. That's Rafferty down the Rochdale right. Not all gets back to make a challenge and hold up the Rochdale fullback, force him all the way back towards McGahey. And he in turn has his options blocked off by Gladwin. Back to Lillis once again outside his penalty area, right footed. Towards Bunny on the Rochdale right. Beats Hart in the air. And Wharton under pressure from Slew. He likes to head out of play. Far side. And the hosts have the throw. Taken quickly to Rafferty. Back to Bunny tight on the touchline. Hart for company. Goes for the 1-2. And Bunny didn't make the return run. And that one's behind for a goal kick. Well, not a bad game so far. But not a... Um, one that's really sparkled at the moment and a distinct lack of goal scoring opportunities I certainly feel that these game, this game has got a little bit more to it than perhaps the first two group games did at this stage Hart scuffs the ball downfield outside of his foot Camps is there to collect Smallwood closes him down not all likewise puts pressure on the Rochdale defence it's McGahey, right footed arc, sit down the line. Wharton wins his header. Smallwood up early. Has he fouled the Rochdale man? The answer is yes. I think it's Daniel Adshed who's gone down and stayed down. Smallwood trying to win that one from the wrong side, sort of going back towards his own goal. Hence the referee, Sebastian Stockbridge, awarding the host the free kick. Bunny the man to take. Again, McGahey stays back. Canavan goes forward. Canavan the obvious target. Left footed. From midway inside the Rovers half. Swings it in. Too close to Fisher, who collects comfortably once again. And he looks for options and he launches it long downfield towards Samuel. Header won by McGahey. Bennett gets the ball and will carry it on. Despite Samuel perhaps getting in his way a little bit, tries to cross into the area towards Nuttall, who was looking to get there. Small one places it towards goal. It was travelling and it was blocked by the defender. Back to Hart. He goes left footed. He deep to Bennett, who collects right hand edge of the area. Good pressure from Rovers. Flicks in and it's just off the top of a defender. And then Rafferty, I think, has scuffed that one behind. And that will be a Rovers corner. 
Now the chance in amongst all of that was for Richie Smallwood, as you believe, same end where he scored in the league meeting, and he was looking to find the bottom right-hand corner again. Certainly travelling, certainly bending inside the right-hand upright, but all the way on the ground, blocked by a defender en route to goal. Bennett, right foot, it clips that one in. Another delivery which didn't really beat the first man. Hart, chess it down. He'll keep it in play over on the far side. Just manages to get beyond one challenge, but it's forced from pretty much halfway all the way back to Fisher, who chips it downfield. Harper collects inside the centre circle, finds Samuel. Then uh, Gladwin finds himself more central. Harper towards Nyambi, who will just kick and rush beyond the defender. Now he checks and delivers, and the final ball is poor. Far too deep, beyond everybody. And out of play on the far side. And I think from the moment that left his foot, the hand of apology was raised by Ryan Nyambi. So Rafferty with a throw for Rochdale in the right full-back area. Looks down the line. Hart miscues his header out of play. Bennett and Gladwin have just swapped for a few minutes. So Bennett now occupying the position left-hand side of midfield. Gladwin right. Rafferty arcs that one down the line. It did just stay in play. Wharton kept it so. Hart gave it back to Ward, who not for the first time this evening, slightly miscues his clearance, and out of play it goes. And Rafferty, 10 yards inside Rovers' territory, with the throw, goes infield towards Rathbone. Clip forward now to Bonney, on that Rochdale right. Hart for company, Hart's turned it behind, and it's now Rochdale's turn. To uh, have the corner. So left footed Bunny will look to deliver. More of an in swinger again. Five blue shirts in the middle. As it's sent it deep towards the back post. Slew brings it down. Looks for the angle. Just chips it up towards goal. And Fisher makes the save. You'd wonder whether Slew was looking for a teammate there. Or whether... He was going for goal, but Fisher read it. Now sent back in deep towards Slough again, who did get the first control right. The second touch came off his knee, and it's run behind for a goal kick. So that's twice. That Slough has had half a chance. Jordan Slough, if memory serves me correct, did feature four rovers in a famous win at Old Trafford. Never really established himself after a fairly big money move from Sheffield United. Had loan spells away from Ewood Park, but a bit of a nomadic striker since. Signed for Rochdale in the summer. Hart with a throw. It's a nut on. Left hand edge of the penalty area. Gladwin. Back on that left hand side. Turning. Inside out, then delivers a right footed ball into the middle, headed away by Unclair. Smallwood brings it down, tried to find Nyambi. Nyambi chasing back to halfway after the touch from the Rochdale man. Ward found Smallwood again, a little bit too casual to casual. Walton into the feet of Harper. Harper holding off camps, quick one two with Smallwood. Back to Wharton, who's looked nice and assured so far. Then he gives it away, almost on cue, trying to roll it to the feet of Samuel. Wasn't able to find him. And Lillis has yet to make a save in the game. Rolls the ball out to McGahey. Long downfield. Fisher will collect that one edge of his area. Not really, other than a couple of crosses, a great deal for Fisher to do at the other end of the park either. Not one that would take too long if you were editing the highlights from what we've seen after what, nearly 26 minutes of this game. Now, Wharton prods the ball to Hart, down the line to Samuel, back in field to Smallwood, who's looking for Samuel with a return pass over his head and out of play. And a frustrated-looking Dominic Samuel looks at Richie Smallwood. Smallwood apologises, berates himself. You can see him still chuttering away under his breath. 
But Rafferty will take the throw directly in front of the Rovers' dugout. Down the line he goes. Flicked on by Bunny. Slew got a touch. Back to Fisher it goes. Firmly places that one downfield. Not all battling with his man. Samuel sees the goalkeeper off his line and goes for goal. Ambitious attempt. But ultimately a fair way off target. You can see there that as soon as Samuel saw that ball was heading towards Nuttall, he gambled, he ran in behind. Such was the confidence that the 20-year-old uh, was going to win his header. And Wharton forward, touched by Camps. as Rafferty going back towards his own goal, tight on the far touchline. Gladwin closing him down. It's fired at McGahey, worked back to Rafferty. Again down the line towards Bunny. Hart just held him up. Wharton takes a touch in that left fullback area, then turns and gives it back to Fisher. A Ward, an experienced centre back. His former clubs, not one of his former clubs, Coventry, of course, were winners of this competition last season. It's Wharton finding Hart. When he gets a touch and out of play for a Rovers throw. Sam Hart. From a Liverpool man, lasted only 45 minutes at the weekend against Barnett before he was taken off. Tony Mowbray could have made a number of changes and he had that available to him on Saturday, given the first half performance against Barnett. Harper, perhaps the unlucky man. Oh, Watson's foot high there in the challenge and the referee is going to call Scott Watson over and Scott Watson is sent off. Hey. Oh, shit. That's it. Well, can you it. believe it? Fuck. He went to play the ball. Yes, his <laughs> foot was high. But a straight red card for that challenge seems incredibly harsh uh, on Scott Water. More dodgy referee. For, Rovers, for now, at least, have got an uphill task in this game. Down to 10 men. Yeah. 29 minutes just shy of on the oh. clock. And Water... Showing a straight red card for a high foot in the challenge on Joe Bunny. And Sebastian Stockbridge, very, very quick Not good. to make that decision. Let's say the Rochdale man, well, he's straight back to his feet. There's no lasting damage to him. Not that that should be a measure of the challenge, but Wharton's foot, yes, it was high, but it wasn't one of those where studs are showing. And I think he's probably a touch unfortunate there. Well, Rovers are going to make a change here. This could be an interesting one. Like Matty Platt is going to come on. The question will be who goes off? And will it be a striker or a midfielder? Oh, Rafferty with a free kick. Matty Platt here going to be introduced at the next break in play. Rathbone, edge of the penalty area. Still edge of the box. Canavan finds and clear. Left-hand side of the penalty area. Back he goes towards Adshed, who's offside, and Rovers will get the free kick. Matty Platt will be introduced, so Rovers will keep a bank of four at the back. And who is the unlucky man? It is Dominic Samuel going off. So, Dominic Samuel back from his three game ban last half an hour. He'll be frustrated, but a victim of circumstance more than a measure of his performance so far in the game. And perhaps an indication that, you know, Tony Mowbray wants a good long look at Joe Nuttall in this match. Samuel. Well, there aren't too many protests as he comes off there. Matty Platt comes on. And he'll go and line up alongside Elliot Ward at the, Elliot Ward at the heart of Rovers' defence. Well, Platt's first act is a challenge on halfway, which breaks for Rochdale. So Rovers reorganising to, to an extent anyway, just not all up top now, so... 4-4-1. Now, all of a sudden, progress in this competition looks a tough ask. Harper 
Back to Nyambi, flicks it forward. Bennett, tried to get beyond Camps, couldn't do so. Smallwood, hurrying Rathbone, forcing him back to McGahey. Canavan again. Love to see the challenge by Wharton once more. I do feel a little bit for the young defender who will now serve. That's deemed an act of violent conduct, a three-match ban. Now, whether that applies for the league, given the uh, different rules in this competition, we'll have to maybe wait and see. It's not quite how he would have wanted to catch the eye of Tony Mowbray this evening, that's for sure. Oh, behind it's gone off half for a corner to Rochdale, which Bunny will take. He's left it for Rathbone on this occasion. So Oliver Rathbone will stride forward, right footed in towards the near post area. A couple of ricochets. Smallwood clears it against the Rochdale man, then launches it downfield and out of play. And Rochdale have the throw. Rafferty finds Camps. Canavan to his left. Rob is sitting very, very deep. At the moment, Bennett out to press him. And there's a space for Enclair on the near side. Back to Adshed. McGahey finds Rafferty. Rochdale playing a bit of keep ball here. Keith Hill just looks at his watch. And he'll see there are just over 13 minutes of the first half remaining. So a good hour for Rovers to play in this game. A man light. Chip forward towards Bunny, who jumps with Hart. Bunny's got a touch on that one. Ward will have to play it under pressure from Slew. Down the line he goes to Gladwin, who miscontrols. And Rochdale have it back. And that is when you need to get the ball and keep the ball. But Camps. Quick one to with Adshed. Finds Williams. Bunny on that right-hand side again. Goes on the outside. Hart makes a challenge. Bunny rides it and will drive into the penalty area. Still going. Fires it across the face of goal. And it's too deep for Enclair. He made his way into the box but couldn't get on the end of that one. So out of play. Near side it goes. And Rovers will get the throw. And the challenge from Scott Watson. I can say it was head height. No doubt about it. Now it's whether that in itself... He's deemed to be dangerous, and that is why the referee has shown the straight red card. I'm intrigued already to get the opinion of Tony Mowbray to see what he makes of that decision. Just wonder, as a contest, it might well have spoiled it a little bit. Canavan finds McGahey. Into camps inside the centre circle. Rathbone drops short. To collect, take over, and he drives forward to about 30 yards out, tries to slide it downfield. Harper won the ball back, looked as though he was fouled, no free kick. Nyambi prodded that one towards Platt, sold him a little bit short, it's slew in the area, fires the shot towards goal, and Fisher makes a smart save. Well, again, defensively, Rovers almost architects of their own downfall there. Short pass by Nyambi and Platt. Off guard, really. He didn't want to commit to the challenge. And then when it dropped to Slew from just outside the box, he fiercely struck that one towards goal. And to be fair to Fisher, he's made a smart save. The first real save, you would say, of the game. As Ward gets a touch on that one. All Rochdale at the moment. Platt steps in. Picked up by Camps. Cries of man on from the home supporters as Nuttall was trying to get back on terms with him. Rathbone finds Canavan, Camps again. Rafferty almost playing like a right winger at the moment. Camps forced to turn by Nuttall, who's not had a sniff this evening. Looking for his third in as many games, third in as many competitions in three games. McGahey and Canavan between them, keeping hold of the ball. And since Scott Wharton was sent off, Rovers have hardly had possession of the football. 
Back to Lillis it goes. A long downfield, looking for Slews, trying to run in behind Ward. Ward wins his header. That looked like handball by the Rochdale man, and the referee belatedly gave the free kick. Cue the uh, ironic cheers from the Rovers supporters. No rush from Rovers, as you would expect. To take the uh, free kick, Fisher slowly making his way outside the penalty area. And Scott Wharton on his first first team appearance of this season sent off as Fisher goes forward a reminder Rovers down to 10 men Hart chests it downfield cleared high in the air Rovers still looking to get hold of the ball snapshot from Harper was blocked away Gladwin with a touch towards Hart left hand side he'll drive down the line as he played that one against Bunny he has but behind it goes and that will be a Rovers corner taken by Elliot Bennett once again could do with a slightly better delivery than the others that we've had from him so far from the far side right footed more height on this one and it was a great chance in the middle for Joe Nuttall who got up inside the six yard box with that one and has glanced his header well wide <clears throat> any real firm kind of contact with that one and it would surely have ended up in the back of the net golden opportunity for 10 man Rovers to take the lead in this game. And he knew it straight away. Joe Nuttall. Perhaps, perhaps, didn't realise how good a chance when it came to him it was. Now at the other end. Bunny, nutmegs, part. Tries to slide it towards the near side. Smallwood steps in, helps it on to Gladwin. Fired against Gladwin by McGahey, and Rochdale will have the throw. Gladwin looks at Smallwood and gives him a glare. The pass wasn't quite where he wanted it. Gladwin just hasn't been able to show the rope supporters anything like what he's capable of. Tony Mowbray has kept faith with him and kept giving him opportunities, but not able to take any of them that have so far come his way. Well, Nyambi gets distance on the header towards Camps inside the centre circle. Harper was trying to get there. Cleared back towards Canavan. Less than six minutes of the first half remaining. I think we'll probably have at least two, if not three, additional minutes at the end of this half as well. Okay, he... Short to Camps inside his own half. He's trying to get beyond Nuttall. Nuttall has kept with him. Rafferty straight back to his... Central defensive defender Harrison McGahey. He's now looking longer downfield. Season Clare has made the move on the left hand side, and that's where the big diagonal goes. Pinpoint pass brought down beautifully, and the cross into the middle, straight into the arms of Fisher. Needed a better delivery, and Keith Hill turns away frustrated that the ball into the box wasn't better there. Fisher right footed. To launch downfield. Gladwin doesn't even make a challenge on Rafferty. And Rafferty frustrated as he chests the ball out of play. And that will be a throw. Sam Hart will take. It's the feet of Bennett who's moved off that right-hand touchline. Hart takes over again and can perhaps drive forward. He's then a touch late in the challenge with Camps. Both men end up down on the ground. And again, the referee might have a little bit of work to do here. It was a 50-50. Both men were entitled to go for, but Sam Hart, in being a split second late, is going to find himself going into the book now as well. Shown a yellow card. Well, there is a bit of history with 
Sebastian Stockbridge. I remember a, a league game between Rovers and Barnsley a few years ago at Oakwell when he uh, gave the hosts a very, very controversial penalty. And uh, the manager at the time, Gary Bowyer, unleashed a barrage to the official at the full-time whistle and was subsequently uh, reprimanded by the FA. I don't think any great love lost. As Nyambi gives it back to Fisher, closed down by two. Long downfield. Bennett picks it up for Rovers, drives towards the corner of the area, chips it in towards Nuttall on the volley! Five yes! Feed the fucking nuts! The fans get it! for Joe, who just keeps on scoring for Rovers. Ten men, we've only got ten men. We've only it's got three, ten men. Three We've the only got ten forward. men. Ten men. Volley's all right footed. Keeper got a touch, but it went down into the ground, up into the roof of the net. Oh, yes. And not all second in this competition this season. Go on the net. May well put Rovers on course for progress in the Checker Trade Trophy. Approaching half time and somewhat against the odds. It's Rochdale nil. Ten man Rovers one. And a perfect counter from Rovers. With Captain Elliot Bennett moving down the right-hand side and producing the ball into the middle. And Joe Nuttall again, having missed that header a few minutes ago, made no mistake this time when it came He's to deadly him. Deadly, so lad. Composed with the finish as well. Didn't look to absolutely lash it home. It was a side-footed volley. And it had too much on it for Lillis. That's he just a tonic for Rovers as we approach half-time. And Rochdale looking for an immediate response. Gladwin heads forward. Smallwood can't quite get there. And it's flicked down the line. One for Slew to chase. Right-hand edge of the penalty area. Infield, he goes to Rafferty, Rafferty back towards Slew, tight angle, tries a shot, blocked by Harper, Harper cheekily somewhat appeals that the ball had bounced back off the Rochdale man, the referee was close by and didn't agree, so corner to the hosts, Rovers looking to hold on to half time now, but what a boost that goal from Joe Nuttall could be, corner whipped in, it's not all there again. You just can't keep him away from things at the moment. That's all so fire. Your defence is terrifying. Lines are like a magnet to him. A Rathbone back. To McGee. Finds Canavan. Canavan forward. Space for Rafferty. Right hand side. Slid down the line towards Bunny. He clips that one in and there's a couple of players in the middle. Williams brings it down and the shot in the end from McClare is up and over the bar. Three. Really good opportunity for Rochdale to equalise in the 45th and final minutes of the first half. But McClare blazes high over the crossbar. Oh, wow. Not really the first time since we've gone down to Ten men that Rovers have looked really stretched in the game. Our fourth official about to come forward and tell us how much added time there will be. There will be two added at the end of this first half. A dramatic first half. Rovers reduced to ten men before the half hour mark. Scott Wharton shown a straight red card for a challenge on Bunny. His foot, no doubt, very, very high. Whether it was violent, I'm not entirely sure. Despite that, ten men have managed to get their noses in front. Joe Nuttall with three minutes of the first half remaining. Oh, Platt has missed his header. Ward gets a touch. Slew is there and Slew volleys wide with a goal gaping. Uh, All he had to do was get it on target. Yes. And Rochdale will level. Total lack of communication at the back for Rovers. And Platt and Ward not clearing their lines. Fisher came racing out to the edge of his penalty area. And Slew just had to thread it through them. 
and into the unguarded goal, but he was unable to do so. And Williams just down into the penalty area for Rochdale. He's had a bit of treatment. He'll be okay to carry on. So that's two good chances since Rovers have taken the lead for Rochdale to level in this game, and they've not been able to take either of them. Oh, Fisher to send it downfield, right footed. 20 seconds of any time remaining, probably a little bit more because of the injury to Williams. Toward plants that one forward over the head of Nuttall through <laughs> to Lillis. It goes. He right footed, sends it long downfield. Slew and Platt will battle for that one. Good header by Matty Platt. Camps collects. Platt, who's played in both the Checker Trade games so far. Sub in the first one, started the second. Rafferty crosses in. Again, Platt gets the touch. And Claire there, 20 yards out, sends the cross in towards Bunny. A good piece of defending by Sam Hart. Made sure the Rochdale man couldn't get a clean run and header on that one. And it is behind for a goal kick. And that is the last act of a first half, which was a slow burner, but it all kind of burst into life just before the half-hour mark when Scott Watson was shown a straight red card by the referee, Sebastian Stockbridge, <laughs> for a high challenge on Joe Bonney. Rochdale subsequently had an awful lot of the ball, but despite that, it was Rovers who got their noses in from three minutes before half-time. Bennett bursting forward down the inside right channel, crossing into the middle, and that man, Joe Nuttall, right place, right time, to right-footed volley home for Rovers. Rochdale did hit back in the short time after that goal between then and the half-time whistle with two very good chances. McClare over the top, slew with the goal gaping, volleyed wide. Good off, the break here. And it's finally poised, this Checker Trade Trophy Group C clash. It is Rochdale nil, Rovers 1. At the moment, Rovers doing enough to qualify for the next stage. We're back with you with full second half commentary and I follow Rovers in just a few minutes' time. We'll be back after half time. We'll be back after half time.
We'll be back after half time. We'll be back after half time. We'll be back after half time. We'll be back after half time. We'll be back after half time. We'll be back after half time. We'll be back after half time. We'll be back after half time. We'll be back. Half time. 
We'll be back after half time. We'll be back after half time. We'll be back. Well, welcome back to the Crown Oil Arena, where we are not too far away from getting the second half underway in this final Checker Trade Trophy Group C game between the hosts Rochdale and Rovers. Rovers. A goal up, but a man down at the break. Scott Walton sent off. Joe Nuttall on target just before half-time. If it stays like this, the Rovers go through to the next stage of the competition. But it's 45 minutes to go, and there are certainly opportunities for Rochdale late on in that first half. So you suspect there might yet be a bit of work for Tony Mowbray's side to do. We are just underway with Rovers now kicking from right to left. The host Rochdale, they've got their blue tops, white shorts, blue socks on. Rovers, the black and red tops, red shorts and black socks. And Rovers in the second half, having made a change in that first period when we took off Dominic Samuel and brought on Matty Platt to replace Scott Water at the heart of the defence. I've got Andrew Fisher in goal, the back four, Ryan Nyambi. Matty Platt, Elliot Ward and Sam Hart. The midfield right to left is Elliot Bennett, Richie Smallwood, Rakeem Harper and Ben Gladwin. And playing up top, the goal scorer, Joe Nuttall. The hosts have got Josh Lillis in goal. It's Joseph Rafferty, Harrison McGahey, now Canavan and Kosi and Clare. At the back, the midfield three of Oliver Rathbone, Callum Camps and Jordan Williams. And in the front three, Joseph Bonney on the right-hand side, Daniel Adshad on the left and Jordan Slew. Former Rover through the middle. Well, not all upended on the near touchline. And Rovers will get a free kick. An early opportunity in the second half. And we're sending forward both Matty Platt and Elliot Ward. The free kick will be taken by Elliot Bennett, the man who did create that first goal for Rovers just before half time. 4-5 in black and red in the penalty area. It's Bennett whips it in decent delivery. And I tell you what, Ward got a touch. Nuttall still trying to keep it alive inside the penalty area. He's done so and he plays it back towards Bennett who stands it up deep into the box. It nearly came for Platt. Ward trying to help him out. Slew it is who just glances that one down the line. It'll run away from Rathbone. Out of play. And Rovers will have the throw. What a quiet break. I think for Elliot Ward who was, who was trying to get the decisive touch on that one. Rochdale were able to clear away. Nyambi, it is. Who throws down the line. Out of play. Nyambi again can make ground downfield. Ten men will be looking to be a bit more sound defensively than they were perhaps towards the tail end of the first half. And managed to look a threat going forward. Of course, not all getting the goal, but did surrender a few opportunities. And if you carry on in that vein, and you do feel that sooner or later that uh, Rochdale might be able to take one of the chances that comes their way. So there's Lillis with the goal kick, launches it forward towards Nyambi, battling with Williams. Prodded forward, Smallwood's clearance. Only reaches Bonnie, edge of the penalty area, goes infield onto his left foot. Harper steps in and will now look to drive downfield. Challenge comes in off Rathbone and how to play near side it goes. And it will be a Rovers throw. 
challenge for the midfielders, not just the defenders in the second half, as Rovers look to hold on to what we have in this game. We'll need big performances from the likes of Harper, Smallwood, middle of the park. Gladwin could do with coming to the party as well. Bennett, you kind of know what you're going to get from him. It's in the right fullback area. Rochdale will have the throw. Back to Lillis. It goes. Attendance this evening, 1,018. Just creeping over the 1,000 mark. I don't know what we said. It's 200. Travelling supporters. Who once again have seen John Nuttall on target for Rovers in this game. Nyambi. Throws down the Rovers right. Claire underneath that one. It's back into Rovers territory. Smallwood goes cross field. Gladwin has got there to hold the ball. Checks onto his right foot. Chips it forward towards Nuttall, who's offside. Now diving header by the defender. Just about gets the ball back to his goalkeeper. To be fair, Canavan did very well there. Sensing the danger behind him. In the shape of Joe Nuttall. Slipping his second of the game. He was able to divert the ball back to Lillis. But Rovers still showing... They are going to be a threat in this game in the second half. That's all in particular. Threatening in behind the back line. He's in power, but he's got 20 year old causing problems. I'll be down the line looking for Nuttall. Comes off the head of Jordan Williams. Camps takes over. Goes back to McGahey. Shot towards Canada. He just offloaded the ball before. Not all arrived. And Claire to the feet of Adshed. Back to and Claire. Shifts it onto his left foot. Prodded away by Smallwood. To Williams. Camps. Five yards inside the Rovers half. Takes over. Camps closed down by Not all. Not all going to block on that one, but it's spun back to Rochdale. Man, I think Keith Hill is going to make a double change for Rochdale shortly. Okay, he towards Rafferty on the right hand side slides it forward Hart stretches to intercept and then just clears up towards halfway not all or shouldn't have got there but did in the end and now he can charge forward down the left hand side struggling to get the ball under his control now he's done so he's got Bennett and Gladwell in the middle still keeps hold of the ball left hand edge of the box looking for options rolls it infield towards Hart who took it in his stride went to ground wanting the free kick the referee says no and Rochdale might now look to counter Camps into the feet of Slew. Slew gives it away. Platt steps in. Couldn't find a teammate though with a touch. It's with yeah. Rochdale once more. Callum Camps. Rafferty darts forward from fullback and he slid towards him. Hart's back in position in that left fullback area. Turns it onto his left foot and clears off the Rochdale man. Out of play. The fourth official just looks at Keith Hill and Keith Hill, I think, gives the nod for the changes to be made. Well, the first change is going to be Jordan Williams going off. Coming on is number 16, Matty Dunn. Second change is Molly Rathbone going off. Coming on, Braddon Inman. Attacking changes, looks as though Dunn is going to go and play up top alongside Slew. Ball making way, Brad Inman. Looks as though he will play left hand side. It's maybe more of a 4 4 2. You've got Bunny out on the right. Inman left, Dunn and Slew through the middle, central two. Camps and Adshed. I think we'll go and play in there. Short ball towards Sinclair. Cry of frustration from Bennett as he slid in but couldn't keep the ball in play. Much in possession. So early changes from Keith Hill as he looks to try and do something about the fact that his side are behind in this game. Free kick given in Rochdale's favour. Foul by Elliot Bennett, who 
has got a look of innocence on his face, not bought by the referee. From the far side. Chance to whip the ball into the penalty area. Bonnie stands over this one. Left footed from the left hand side. Told to take it. Foot or so further towards the touchline. Now he'll swing it in. Decent enough delivery, teasing that one into the box and at the back post. It's just volley towards goal, I think, by Rafferty. Didn't connect as cleanly as you would like. And Fisher was able to make the save. Made one good stop in the first half. Fisher from Slew, a powerful drive from the edge of the area. Chances they had late on. Claire and Slew failed to hit the target. Now Dunn moving down the Rochdale left. What's a dangerous looking ball into the middle? Well, headed away from just outside the six yard box by Ward. No, Claire back to Dunn on his left foot. Swings a really low nice. ball in now. The stretch from Platt sends it downfield and out of play. It just looks as though those changes at the moment. Down, injection of life. Yeah. Claire was in field. Canavan cross field towards Rafferty. Bit of space which Hart tries to close down. Whipped in. Again, Ward is there to head away. Camps on the volley. Scuffs it towards the edge of the area. And like a high foot on Harper. I was going to say, the referee didn't give the free kick initially. Mm -hmm. Then he kind of uh, realised that having sent someone off in the first half for a high challenge that he had to give that one and it is a Rovers free kick like oh, Sebastian like Stockbridge the man in the middle the not uh, the most popular of characters when it comes yeah, to Rovers one. Harper finds not all left hand side not all driving in field plays it beyond Camps Camps gets a touch Smallwood will get to the loose ball first and find Bennett Bennett Turns in front so, yeah, back to Smallwood. Go, yeah, Naomi, the option on the right hand side, asks an awful lot of the full line there. Smallwood and Naomi doesn't get there. Canavan to clear it downfield. Platt wins his head up high in the air. Smallwood sees it bounce off I'm his back and then keep it in play. A little bit of access with the Rochdale man, but one but two. Yeah, and Shed and Claire wrestled to the ground. And the referee is calling over Richie Smallwood. And he's also. Yeah, I word with go. Elliot Bennett, Bennett the captain on the night, the, uh, perhaps just know. telling Smallwood, under the watchful eye yeah. of the old skipper, that he does need to calm down a little bit. And then, you know. But in the first half, Sam Hart, Watson sent off. Hart was the other man to pick up a card in that open period. Gay okay, looks cross field out towards and Clare brings it down, bounces off his right leg, then bobbles off his left. A terrible bounce off the surface there in his defence. But it ends up rolling behind, and that will be a goal kick. And we played nearly 12 minutes of the second half. Not too much danger so far for Fisher's goal, which will be encouraging from Rover's point of view. We know that the way the maths works, that if we win tonight, we will progress from Group C going to the next round of the competition regardless of the outcome of tomorrow night's game between Bury and Stoke City under 21s a draw and we'll be reliant on how that game goes a defeat and we are definitely out of the competition Ward volleys downfield Gladwin heads that one on but it'll disappear out of play near side and that's a throw for Rochdale they're in a hurry to get the ball back now they will try and test out the 10 men. So in terms of fitness, it would be a good exercise for many of those out there, particularly those who haven't played too much football. Like some Harper and Gladwin and Hart. Award maybe in that category as well. And Shed, short towards Inman. Wriggles away from a couple of challenges. Back square he goes to Camps. Finds Hatchet again. Claire. On the far side, left foot, it crosses in. The stooping header might break for Inman. Miscontrols at the crucial moment. Bennett on the D edge of his penalty area. 
Been brought down by Dunn. And Rovers get the free kick. Again, set the time over this one. Ward playing, playing the fool here when he's uh, been told to take it back a couple of yards and he's just looking at the referee as if like, what are you saying? And that allows Fisher some time to come and collect the ball and waste a few more seconds. Good experience coming into play there from Elliot Ward. As Fisher sweeps it downfield towards Nutter, battling for that one. Camps is able to hold off Harper. And again, has struggled to stamp his influence on this game. Inman trying to get beyond Nyambi, finds a bit of space and clips it forward, right footed over the defence, Fisher alert to the danger there, comes and collects, there were defenders covering off the run, runs above Pony and Dunn, Fisher got his hands on the ball, good safe pair of them, and now he looks downfield, right footed. Sends it booming in behind the defenders. Nuttall will try and get on the end of this one. Shows good strength. Nuttall onto his right foot. Shoots towards goal and he's a whisker wide. Tried to wrong foot the goalkeeper there. Going for the near post rather than the far. After showing initially a really good turn of foot. And then strength to hold off the defender. And he was not too far away from getting his hand on the second of the game. And that. May well have been a decisive blow had that have ended up in the back of the net. Certainly not from not all on Rovers' point of view. But he's got that threat on the counter-attack. Will pose problems. Just the outlet ball. If in doubt, he can send it long to not all. Glad we know at the moment. Twisting and turning inside the left fullback area, trying to find a route away from his own goal. Eventually settles for winning Rovers a throw. Which Hart will take. Looking down the line. Not all the target. Flicks it off. Gladwin won't get on the end of that one, but he goes chasing the ball. Up with Canavan. Miscues out towards the far side. Inman struggling to keep it in play and can't do so. So Rovers have the throw. And at the moment kind of have Rochdale at arm's length which is you know, a testament to how well Rovers have done with the 10 men Nyambi down the line Claire holds off Nuttall, Nuttall tries to take it away from Inman, blocks the first pass, Inman has to go back to Canavan in field he goes, Harper will collect and now he'll drive forward, he's got Gladwin to his left, that's where the ball goes both Bennett and Nuttall in the middle, Gladwin squares it towards Bennett who can't get a clean firm touch on that one and it sort of scoops through the penalty area, out of play on the far side half a chance for Elliot Bennett there, a clean connection and again it would have been a decent opportunity for Rovers Slew at the other end, turns away from the challenge Faced by Toby, a lot to beat both Nyambi and Smallwood. Nyambi's too quick for him, though, and he just gets back. Goal side. Slew brings him down, so Rovers get the free kick. Just wonder, at the other end, how good a chance that was for Elliot Bennett. He just sort of stuck his foot out towards the ball glanced it on more than a firm strike it's half a chance for Gladwin as well and so he got there on the left hand side just wonder whether he could have sort of taken his man on when he was one on one Sorry. Well, Miami has found Bennett Bennett went for the ball forward towards Gladwin Gladwin thumbs up didn't make any kind of move towards it though kind of caught him off guard Hart wins his header. Gladwin won't collect. A few Rovers supporters getting a bit frustrated with Ben Gladwin. Judging by the moans and groans and a few that stood up and voiced their disapproval then. Claire down the line. Sloot again. Ball tight at his feet. Then it comes across, gets a touch and Claire keeps it in play and flicks it forward. Sloot tight on the goal line. Fires that one across. Not too sure whether that was 
an attempted shot from a ridiculously acute angle, or whether it was a cross, whichever he intended, it didn't come off. It flew straight behind, and that will be a goal kick, which Fisher will take. Reminder, it's still Rochdale nil, Rovers 1, 10 man Rovers 1. Of course, goal from Nuttall, three minutes before half time, coming 12 minutes after Scott Wharton had been sent off. Straight red card for a, a challenge on Bunny when his foot was very high. I think unfortunate, there's a general consensus that he was very, very unfortunate. So he's got a straight red for that. His first senior appearance for Rovers in over a year as well. 20th of September last year, the last time he played for the first team, Scott Wharton. And Ward fires it towards the edge of the penalty area. Smallwood stooped to get his head on that one. Again, Camp's foot was a little bit high. And the Rovers players now looking at the referee saying, look, why isn't that a booking? Why isn't there some punishment for that challenge? Well, he's not so far, the referee, gone to his book. It doesn't look as though there'll be any further punishment for Camps. That's the inconsistency, that's the frustration there. Now, this free kick is... Oh, wait. It's about a 30 yards out. It's right of centre. I think Bennett initially fancied it. Gladwin does as well. Hart was there for a second. He's backed away. I think this has been left for Ben Gladwin. Confidently stands some five yards behind the ball, Gladwin. Now moves forward, right-footed, sends it towards goal, bounces in front of the goalkeeper and forces him into a save. But it was a relatively routine one for Josh Lillis. He launches it long downfield. That one will run out of play away from Sloot. And Rovers have the throw. And we're nearly halfway through the second half. Our ten men doing a very, very good job of maintaining their advantage at the moment. Arguably, of the two sides, have looked more like scoring in the second period. Good control and lovely turn by Gladwin. That's better. Now what are the options like for him as he moves down the left-hand side? Bennett and Nuttall are central. Gladwin went for goal himself. Saw his shot blocked. A shame. He just needed a bit more at the end of that promising piece of skill. Switch of play to Claire. Harper closing him down. Claire in field towards Adshed. Again, the force back to Canavan. Really good shape and work rate from the midfield players in black and red, particularly in the second half. Claire closed down by Harper. Back to Canavan he goes. You can probably hear the frustration from the home supporters. There's the switch of play. That's where the space is. Rafferty looks down the line towards Slew. Slew to cross in. Deflected behind of Gladwin. And Rochdale have the corner. Oh, yeah. They've made the two changes. and Well, for five minutes or so, after both Dunn and Inman were introduced, Rochdale looked a little bit sharper, a little bit brighter. But since then, Rovers have managed to reel them back in and haven't looked in any great danger set piece concern as it's whipped in right footed glanced by not all outside the penalty area Niambi touches it beyond one man and now fancies a straight race on the second and he powers after it there's a man down in the penalty area two men down actually so the referee will stop the game John Nuttall it is who might require a little bit of treatment and there is now Canavan also on his haunches inside the six yard box Nuttall's back to his feet looks as though he'll be okay but Canavan definitely going to require a little bit of treatment and a little break in play in this game as Ben Gladwin disappears over to the far side take on a bit of fluid it's Mark Venus who is pretty much in charge of Rovers this evening Tony Mowbray I think has been sat down throughout. Mark Venus has been the man edge of the technical area issuing the instructions. He gives Ben Gladwin a pat on the back. 
Bennett likewise just getting up a few instructions at the moment. It's the ankle that's the problem for Canavan, which looks to have rolled his left ankle. Back to his feet, not moving the best at the moment. It'll be interesting to see how the game restarts because well, Niambi had probably just surrendered possession, but I wonder whether it might be returned to Rovers. Like Bennett would just say, no, we will give it back to Lily. So I think he recognised that Inman had just got that goal side. So Bennett sweeps it downfield to the Rochdale goalkeeper. Ripple of applause from the home supporters. Canavan still not moving very well. He's only just getting to the corner flag now. Having gone off behind the goal. Well, there's a free kick given against Rakeem Harper. And again, it's not 30 yards just over away from goal. You know, I think it might be the end of Canavan's involvement in the game. As I can see, Matthew Gillam is going to come on. Number 36 for Rochdale. I'd be amazed if it was anyone but Canavan who goes off. Just waiting for the fourth official to get his board sorted. A lot change with what, 20 minutes just over of the game remaining. Third and final change for Rochdale. It is Canavan going off. And Matthew Gillam coming on. Slew will take the free kick and it's yeah outside the stadium. Step forward from 30 yards there with his right foot. And granted, it's a fairly small stand behind Andrew Fisher's goal. But from the moment it left his boots, it was going up, up. And it did just clear the roof. And that's probably on the main road somewhere, that one. And ironic cheers from the Rovers supporters. Jordan Sloop. Ex-Rover, who has struggled to make an impact tonight. Did have one fierce shot in the first half. Had one very good chance right at the end of the first period. Bennett chips it forward. Gladwin trying to get on the end of that one. Rafferty guides it back to Lillis, who throws out early to Bunny. Bunny now finds himself left-hand side. I think Slew has gone to play on the right. Gillam has gone through the middle. Dunn trying to get on the end of that one. It came off. Platt just bounced off his toe and went behind. So that will be a corner. So the hosts will try and work out how they've reorganised. Gillam, I think, has gone to play up top alongside Dunn. Slew on the right-hand side. Corner sent in deep, beyond everybody. Ward didn't really get off the ground for that one. It's back with McGahee, once more, sends it in deep, headed back across, goal, and Slew turns it home, and Rochdale are level. The flag stayed down when Rovers were looking towards the assistant referee. And no decision was forthcoming, and with, what, 18 minutes remaining, Rochdale are back on level terms, and it's the former Rover, Jordan Slew, who's got the goal. Rochdale won, Rovers won. Seconds after a free kick that gave us comedy value. Slew has shown he does know where the back of the net is. And now, all of a sudden, Rovers' progress in the uh, competition. He's hanging a little bit by a thread. Of course, a win for either side in the hour through tonight. I wonder, is there another option available to Rovers? Made one change in the first half. Do they throw on someone? When you look at the bench, look and see who's available. And Antonson, maybe, if Rovers wanted to go and win the game. Is that too much of a gamble, or do you take the penalties and hope that you win the shootout? Bennett felt that he was fouled there by Bonnie. Again, the referee doesn't agree. So Bunny will have the throw. 
10 yards from the corner flag far side. Back to Adshed. Bunny again rolls it in field. Smallwood's there to intercept. He goes to ground, gets the free kick. This is where it could start getting a little bit complicated with all the permutations if it finishes as a draw. But of course, we will have a penalty shootout to get the bonus point. If Rovers were to win that, then we would move up to five points. Rochdale would also be on five points by virtue of the point they'd get for being losers despite drawing. But they would stay top by having a better goal difference. That would mean then that if Berry were to win tomorrow night in their game, then they would leapfrog Rovers. Gladwin clips that one in field, looking for Nuttall. Claire in the air. Hart barges into the back of Sloop. Rochdale get the free kick. The ideal scenario for Rovers would be if, of course... This game ends a draw. Tomorrow night does likewise. It would open the door for Berry and Stoke, the third and fourth place sides in the group. This game finished on as even. Camps back to Claire. He played a part in the goal with a header back across goal, which allowed Slew to tap it in. He goes back to his goalkeeper, Lillis. Lillis right footed, sends it forward. Gillam is there, but Hart heads forward. That one will. Disappear out of play near side. Hodgdale will have the throw. So 15 minutes for Sadi time remaining. It's not worth it for 10 bucks. The gay heat square to Enclair. Up towards halfway. Just over halfway into Rovers territory. Smallwood slides in and out of play it goes. Cry of frustration from Elliot Bennett. Copied by the Rochdale fans, and then Bennett turns to them and says, Calm down. There would have been a banter, the Rovers captain tonight, with the uh, supporters, the home supporters on the far side. I mean, it's such a small amount. It's not... Long downfield. Ward wins his header. Bennett touches it back. And Ambi scoops it in the air. Adshed collects his heart to play it again against the Rochdale man. Ward away. Gladwin can't keep it in play, no, he thought he had done, then he just carried the ball out, so Watchdale have the throw they want to get the game back underway quickly Rovers not at the moment allowing them to do so done it is and finally gives the ball to Rafferty and take the throw, and Hatcher just labouring for Rochdale at the moment Slew picked up a knock a minute or so the go as well Hart in the left fullback area. Turns, scoops that one down the line, but out of play it goes. So again, Rochdale will have the throw. 13 and a half minutes remaining. Rochdale 1, Rovers 1 in this Checker Trade Trophy Group C game, the final group game. Gladwin battling for the ball near the corner flag. Wins Rovers the throw. And when it cheers as the, again, the assistant referee raises the flag, I think the Rovers supporters, who probably had a better view of that slew goal, may well have felt that he drifted offside. Hart down the line. Not all. Can't get his head on that one. Ward finds Hart again, who just launches it forward. Bennett's on the chase, putting the defender under pressure, and Bennett gets there first ahead of Bonnie, looking to drive downfield. On his right foot, oh, he miscontrolled. He turned infield away from Leclerc, and it got away from him. And it was a good chance for the Rovers captain. He's frustrated. He looks to the skies as now it's at the other end. Rochdale coming forward. Adshed 25 yards out and central drives it and plays it wide towards Slew. Slew infield onto his left foot. Shot blocked away. Brought down by Camps. Camps square to Bunny. Bunny to drive it towards goal. Blocked by Nyambi. Out of play. It goes far side. And Rochdale have the throw, and it's a developing into a very decent cup tie. Very much, to some extent, like the first half, coming to life late on. Again, good strength shot by Bennett. They settled for winning Rovers. The throw on the far side. He's still thinking about that chance a minute or so ago. He's yet to score four Rovers. This campaign, Elliot Bennett, has scored some spectacular goals last season. 
Scotland, notably, of course, Blackpool at home, which was, in the end, our goal of the season last year. He's still shaking his head. And Nyambi with the throw. Down the line he goes. Off the head of Bunny. Claire out of play. Nyambi again, bang on halfway. Still played with more three at the back. And we just told to stop creeping forward. As soon as the supporters made that point, the referee put the whistle to his lips. Not all challenges. And Claire get out of play. Another row was thrown pretty much on halfway, although Nyambi has stolen about 15 yards further forward. And the young fullback looks for options. It's not all down the line. Bennett short infield. Back to Nyambi who gives it away. Smallwood will go back to Platt. Smallwood was fouled. The Rovers get the free kick. Another foul by Camps who goes straight over to the referee. The referee doesn't take any particular notice of what the Rochdale midfielder was saying. So a free kick from over on the far side. Only about 10 yards inside the Rochdale half. Bennett, the man to take. Both Platt and Ward have gone forward. So Bennett chips it high towards the edge of the area. Ward gets up. He won his header, but he was slightly off balance. And it goes down into the ground and well wide of target. Ten minutes remaining at the Crown Oil Arena. Ten minutes for either side to find a winning goal, or we will have a penalty shootout. Bonus point penalty shootout, which would be a first four overs. Claire, get up over halfway, slides it down the left-hand side. Bunny will give chase, as does Gillum. Nyambi across, Gillum has kept it in play. Helps out by Bunny, then Gillum stands on the ball. Platt prods it away, and well, eventually, Rovers will get the free kick, so I think Gillen was offside. So Fisher will have the free kick at the moment. I can see Joe Rankin Costello and Lewis Travis warming up for Rovers. I wonder whether Rovers have got anything in the locker in terms of bringing somebody on for the penalty shootout. Would you go with a Fisher? Could you do something like throw Raya on? For example, Rovers still have got two changes available to them. Is there something like that? Perhaps an Antonsen, a striker. A lot of play goals and Rochdale have the throw, which Bunny will take. Back to Enclair, square to McGehee. Rafferty right hand side. To McGee, steps in field away from Nuttall and looks for the switch of play out towards Dunn. Dunn brings it down beautifully. Nyambi for company. He goes on the outside, swings a low ball in, takes a couple of deflections, and in the end it comes off Platt and goes back to Fisher. Well, the home supporters crying there for a back pass. It never was in a million years, but Fisher just momentarily did not want to pick the ball up for fear of it being given, and he looked to the referee before the referee said, yep, yeah, you're fine, go on. So Fisher collected and now he launched it long downfield towards Nuttall. Smallwood to the feet of Gladwin. Gladwin with a flick. Won't find Harper. Sent forward. And Ward finds himself in the left fullback area very calmly. Plays it between two Rochdale men towards Platt. Platt arcs it up towards Nuttall. Claire's header high in the air. Nuttall trying to get there. Sees it bounce off his chest and go out of play on the far side. Inman takes the throw, finding Camps, not all to close him down, force him back to McGehee. Seven and a half remaining, one apiece here. So Claire for over halfway. Atchard found Bunny to Claire and Atchard again. McGehee now to Rafferty. Watchdale trying to patiently build from the back. There's been no just launching it forward from the home side. They've kept to their principles of trying to keep the ball 
on the ground. And pass from Camps. Had a few oohs, it wasn't the best. As the ball eventually off Slew, runs all the way back to Fisher. Fisher looking long downfield. Not all looking a little bit leggy at the moment. Start thinking now towards penalty takers. Who'd we'll be there for Rovers? Gladwin, an obvious one. Not all. Bennett. Smallwood, maybe. Harper, perhaps just the front five in the side. Hart might fancy one as well. And would you respect to your likes of Nyambi's Platt and Ward? Well, you never know. Elliot Ward might just fancy it. Might be his secret weapon. Hidden talent of his. Hart steps in to win the ball back. A goal for Rovers would uh, certainly see us avoid the need for penalties it would also see us qualify for the next stage of the competition Hart bundled over by Slough on halfway, just over five minutes remaining, it's a chilly night here in Rochdale I think most of the supporters might appreciate not having to stay for the extra few minutes so Ward stands over this free kick only really not all to aim for Bennett gets close to him Gladwin drifting infield. Ward on the near touchline. Fires it deep towards Nuttall. And brings it down on his chest. Battling with the defender. Breaks outside the box to Smallwood. Smallwood trying to roll it forward towards Hart. Picked off by Rafferty. Rafferty now up towards halfway. Looking for the options ahead of him. Gillen makes a run down the inside right channel. Platt for company. A little back heel into the path of Dunn. Dunn to send it in deep disappointingly so and behind it goes and that will be a goal kick I just wonder whether either side will be able to create another really good opportunity to try and win this game still a bit of time remaining four minutes plus added time four and a half minutes plus added time have been a couple of stoppages in the second half, so I'd suspect there'd be at least two to three minutes given there have been substitutions as well. That's Fisher looking forward. Could he find himself being the hero for Rovers this evening? Oh, Bennett out jumps Bunny, played forward. Pat Platt returns it over the top, straight through to Lillis. He goals, one thing for sure. By my reckoning, anyway, that if uh, even if it does go to penalties, Rovers will not be able to leapfrog Rochdale in the table. Oh, Bennett turns away from a couple of challenges, tight on the touchline, forced back towards his own goal by Inman. All the way back to Fisher. Fisher right footed, arcs it forward, bounces over the head of McNair. Nyambi will try and get there. Oh, McGay, he just holds him off crucially. If Nyambi had perhaps had gambled on that one, he would have had the pace to get away from the defender as well. Instead, it's Lillis to play it forward towards the Rochdale goal scorer, Slew, who goes infield and finds Adshed. Adshed has got Gillam outside him. Rafferty there in support, midway inside the Rovers' half. To the substitute, Gillam again. And now Camps, 30 yards out with Central. Chips it on towards Bonnie on the volley, towards goal. Saved by Fisher, he was offside anyway. So Rovers get the free kick. No great urgency about Rovers' play at the moment. It seems like they have settled for penalties. The permutations would be that if Berry were to beat Stoke tomorrow night, then Berry, of course, it would take Rovers to win the shootout to move up to five points. Essentially, a draw, and we could still qualify, but it would very much depend on how the game tomorrow evening finished. Bunny slides forward. Nyambi dallies in possession, gets back to his feet, though, gets away from John, back to Fisher. He hoists it high up towards halfway. Bennett flicks it on. Not all shows good strength to hold the Rochdale man off. Prod it back to Harper, just got stuck between the two bodies momentarily. 
Now Smallwood finds Gladwin. Can he produce something late on in this game? Gladwin drifts in field away from one and then arcs it in deep towards Bennett. It's Bunny on the volley to clear away. Smallwood's touch actually favours Rochdale. Harper will get a challenge in. Not all. Oh, he's looking for Harper again. The return pass was behind him, so it falls for Camps and Slew now. On the near side, the Rochdale right fires a big diagonal ball towards Inman. Nyambi for company. Goes one way, then the other for the angle to shoot. Back to Camps, it goes. He's not into the feet of Slew inside the penalty area. Slew goes wide and fires it across the face of goal and just wide of the far post. Difficult from this angle to see how close that was. But Slew shifted it onto his right foot and then drilled it beyond the far post. Inside the final minutes of the 90. And we are edging ever closer to our first taste of the uh, Abbott penalty shootout system. Uh, one side will take the first one and the next one will take two. Maybe we won't need it as Bennett flicks it on towards Nuttall. Left hand edge of the penalty area. Nuttall needs a bit of support. Played it in towards Harper. Camps is there to clear away. Slew. Back to goal. Rolls it in field. Inman takes it on. Smallwood didn't make any contact with the challenge there. And yet Rochdale get the free kick. And Smallwood shaking his head in frustration. How much any time will there be? As Bonnie finds Inman. Options either way. He goes in field. So we thought about the shot there for a second. Camps takes over. Back to Adshed. Bonnie left hand side. Fourth official will tell us there'll be three additional minutes as it's sent in deep towards Slew at the back post and he miscues it behind for a goal kick. One of those where the angle was very, very tight. It would need to have been struck very, very sweetly to come back across goal and beat Fisher. But it was a half chance nonetheless. And I wonder whether that might be Rochdale's final opportunity to actually win the game and take all three points from this match. So Fisher to send it downfield. Gladwin jumps, sends his header infield. Can't find Nuttall. Slew again, chips it forward, looking for Dunn. Platt heads down and half away. Smallwood hooks up towards halfway, where it's met by Bonnie. Bonnie handles, so Rovers get the free kick. Pretty much edge of the centre circle. Fisher slowly rolls it forward towards Ward and Platt, neither of whom are going forward for this set piece. So not all looks like the obvious target. Doesn't look as though Rovers will make a change before the uh, penalty shootout. A Ward right footed scoops it out towards the left hand side and Gladwin he holds off Rafferty. Now tight on the near touchline, keeps the ball. Moves away from Slew as well. Still battling away Ben Gladwin. Oh, I think in the end he has just carried the ball out. And that will be a Rochdale throw. And 90 seconds of any time have been played. As Rafferty has the throw deep inside his own half. Looks down the line. I wonder who will be the penalty takers for Rovers. Bennett hooks it over one man. And we fashion the late chance to win it. Not like that. It's cleared long downfield towards Inman. And it may well be Rochdale who have the last chance of the game. Inman looking to dart at Nyambi. A goal now and Rovers go out of the competition. It's done to send it in again. A poor cross into the middle. Behind it goes for a goal kick. And that might be the final act of this game. Bar, of course, the uh, penalty shootout. I can see a few supporters sort of drifting away. I wonder whether they know what's coming. Whether they might just need a steward to say, hey, hang on a second. There's still a bit of action left in this game. Or whether they're just uh, going for a quick pit stop before they return for the excitement of the penalty shootout. Fisher sends it long downfield. 
not all jumps, comes off a Rochdale man. That is the three additional minutes have been played. Hart to take the throw. The referee decides no point in doing that, though. And there is the full-time whistle. And after 90 minutes in this Checker Trade Trophy Group C game, it has finished one apiece. And I'm pretty sure that a few supporters don't actually know the routine here because there are a, a good number heading towards the exits. And, yes, the PA announcer has just said, oh, just, just a reminder, the game now will go to penalties. And all of a sudden there's a... An abrupt about turn from the fans who are thinking, hey, hang on a minute, we don't want to miss what's going on here. So, not all gave Rovers the lead first half towards the tail end. Reminder by that point, Scott Walton had already been sent off. A high foot and a challenge on Bonnie. It was with 18 minutes remaining that the former Rover, Jordan Slew. Leveled for the home side. I'm not entirely sure that either really deserve to win the game. Rovers set the game throughout, given the uh, given the fact we had ten men for over an hour and a couple of chances second half. Weren't able to take them. If we'd done so, at crucial moments. And you never know; it might have been enough to win the game, particularly the one that not all had difficult one. In the draw, he turned back onto his right foot on the hour mark. The question is now: Who fancies taking a penalty? I've to say, look, you know, it is quite funny. I've just seen Keith Hill wander out onto the pitch. He's pretty much been stood in front of his dugout throughout the entire course of the game, but not so much that we could see his attire. And he basically looks like he's going straight to the pub afterwards, does Keith Hill, because he's come with his jeans and his trainers on. A uh, rather casual coat as well. I don't know whether that speaks volumes about his approach to the competition. And he's kind of letting his assistant get on with deciding who will take the penalties. David Law has those duties for Rovers. can see Ben Gladwin doing a bit of stretching. Now, given that's the case, I would expect that he would be among the penalty takers for Rovers, you would think John Nuttall, given his confidence at the moment, will fancy it. Rakeem Harper, a few high fives with the likes of Richie Smallwood. Can Going round, Fisher will be in there for Rovers. You can certainly see Sam Hart had the ball there, so I think he fancies one. Bennett, Nuttall, Harper, and Gladwin, I think, were the other ones that he went for. I'm just going to go through the. Uh, I think Quintos deciding we will take them first. And mind you, we're going to have the new ABBA system, so whoever takes it first, the other team will then get the next two. I'm intrigued to see how this works. The two sides just being called back in. The two captains are going to make their way over. I don't think there's going to be any great advantage, depending on which goal they take them in because there are no fans behind either of the goals so it's not really going to make a great deal of difference I think for the for the sake of it we're better off taking them in front of the goal away to the right so at least it's in the half of the pitch where their own supporters are otherwise they will be slightly short changed and that looks as though it will be the case it looks as though it may well be Rovers to take the first penalty because the Rochdale goalkeeper is moving a little bit more. Not what? It'll be Rochdale to take the first penalty. It will be Rafferty. He is already striding forward. But it does work. It does work. Oh, Like, I can't set it on with my charger. Can you? Fisher is taking a bit of time, just throwing a water bottle over the crossbar. So Joe Rafferty stands edge of the box, just inside. Now he'll move forward, right-footed. Oh, Fisher got a hand to that one. But Rafferty finds the bottom right-hand corner. And Rochdale lead in the shootout. It's going to be Sam Hart to take Rovers' first penalty. 
man who joined on deadline day from Liverpool. Very really confidently moving forward. Josh Lillis in goal for Rochdale. It's worth, of course, an extra point to the winners. And I think the point, if Rochdale could get it, would be enough to send them through. And Hart goes back, moves forward, left footed, finds the bottom right hand corner brilliantly. Super penalty. And it's one apiece, and it is Elliot Ward to take the second penalty for Rovers. I said that Elliot Ward might fancy a penalty. Half in jest, but the experienced central defender has said that he fancies it. And he'll now place the ball down, step back away from it. And he moves forward and Ward finds the bottom left-hand corner. 100% success rate from the spot so far. And Rovers, having taken penalties two and three in this shootout, lead by two to one. It's going to be Brad Inman with the fourth penalty of the shootout, the second for Rochdale. Again, it'll be a right footed penalty. And he strikes confidently up and over Fisher, who's diving to his right. Again, he gets the right way. And it's two apiece. And now the former rover, the man who got the Rochdale goal, Jordan Slew, comes forward. A reminder, it's at this stage, two penalties per side until we hit sudden death. So Slew it is. Straight run up. Now moves to one side and finds the top right-hand corner. And everybody who's stepped up so far has found the back of the net. And it's now up to Richie Smallwood to try and follow suit. The man who scored here in the league game. Can he repeat the feat in this penalty shootout? Has scored in a Wembley penalty shootout before. Smallwood moving forward. Oh, and he goes for power, and it's saved by the goalkeeper. Got a good hand to that one, Lillis, and he's turned it up and over the crossbar. An advantage, Rochdale. And it's Elliot yeah, Bennett, the a yeah. skipper, who you feel must now convert for Tony Mowbray's men. He just flattens the turf in front of the ball. Bennett, shorter run up. He moves forward, sends the goalkeeper the wrong way, and it's 3 3. But Rochdale have the advantage. <laughs> They've now got two penalties to win it. Scored all three of theirs. First off, it will be Matt Gillam to step forward. If he converts, then somebody in blue will have the chance to win the game for Rochdale, send them through, and probably send Rovers out of the competition. It's the substitute Gillam coming forward, and he just waits for Fisher to move. Confidently sends it the opposite way into the bottom left-hand corner. And it's 4-3 to the hosts. And it's Joe Bunny. If he scores this, Rochdale win the shootout. And I'll move to six points in the group. And they will be through to the next round. Bonnie against Fisher. Bunny moves forward, drives it down the middle, and Rochdale win the shootout. They take the bonus point. They've won the shootout by five penalties Rogers. to three. Smallwood missing four overs. That crucial in the end. And that might ultimately mean.